Good afternoon, I'm Alex Marquardt in for Ana Cabrera. Abuse of power, that is the blunt message that is being delivered in, in clear, crystal clear terms from a fired up Joe Biden to a Fox News reporter who was asking him about the debunked conspiracy theory that is being pushed by the president that involves Biden, Biden's son, and Ukraine. Biden just took the stage moments ago in Iowa. Let's listen. Folks, we meet here today at a threat posed by Donald Trump that seems to get worse every single solitary minute. We saw it in El Paso. We saw it and we see it now in Iran and God knows where he's going to go with that. And the stakes are only getting higher. Above all else, we must defeat Donald Trump, period. And stop his abuse of power. We have a president who traffics in the ugliest forces, the ugliest forces in our nation's history. In both clear language and code, President Trump has fanned the flames of white supremacy in this nation. When Charlottesville occurred, and there were decent people standing there saying, we will not go along with this hate, and he was asked when a young woman was killed, he was asked to characterize what happened. He said, quote, there were fine people on both sides. No president, and more than a boo, it's serious, more, no president has ever said anything like that, save the possibility of before the Civil War. Ladies and gentlemen, in doing so, he has signed a moral equivalence between those neo-Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, white supremacists, preaching hate and white supremacy, and those who are opposing it. At that time, I said we're in a battle for the soul of America, and we are in the battle for a soul of America. That's what's at stake. <clears throat> this country can overcome four years of Donald Trump with great difficulty, but eight years, eight years of Trump, I believe, will forever change the character and nature of the country we are. America is unique in all of history. It's an idea, an idea, American creed. All men and women are created equal. We've never fully lived up to that, but we've never, ever, ever walked away from it. It's genius is that every generation of Americans, every generation has opened wider and wider access for more and more people. That's why it's never gathered dust in our history books. We need a president who once again values honesty, decency, treating everyone with dignity and respect, leaving no one behind, giving everyone a fair shot, and understanding that there's something bigger than our individual selves. Yeah. Folks. All right, I want to go now to CNN's Jessica Dean, who's on the ground there in Iowa. Uh, Jessica, Biden has decided clearly that this fight over Ukraine and what the president and Rudy Giuliani have done is one that he wants to engage in. Yeah, that's right, Alex. Earlier today, he did talk to the media about these unfounded claims about him and his son. There is no evidence to these claims, and he had a lot to say about it. Take a listen. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. He is violating every basic norm of a president. You should be asking him the question, why is he on the phone with a foreign leader trying to intimidate a foreign leader, if that's what happened. That appears what happened. You should be looking at Trump. Trump's doing this because he knows I'll beat him like a drum. And he's using the abuse of power and every element of the, the uh, presidency to try to do something to smear me. Everybody looked at this and everybody's looked at it and said there's nothing there. Ask the right question. Mr. Biden, okay, but you've never you spoken to your Pardon son. Are you being impeached for this? Depending on what the, what the House finds, he could be impeached, but I'm not making that judgment now. Okay. The House should investigate it. The House should investigate this. This appears to be an overwhelming abuse of power to get on the phone with a foreign leader who is looking for help from the United States and ask about me and imply things, if that's what happened. That appears to be what happened. We know that's what Giuliani did. 
This is outrageous. You have never Mr. seen Mr. anything Mr. like this. What are you calling on the president to do? President, you said before you entered the race that one of your concerns was about your family being brought into this race. Are you comfortable running a campaign in which... I know I, I know what I'm up against. I know what I'm up against. And a serial abuser. That's what this guy is. He abuses power everywhere he can. He, and he sees any, if he sees any threat to his staying in power, he'll do whatever he has to do. But this crosses the line. Sir, this sir, crosses the line. The I'm calling the president to release the transcript of the, of the call, let everybody hear what it is, let the House see it, and see what he did. That's sir, what I'm calling it. Joe Biden previewed these kinds of attacks that he anticipated this, saying this months ago to a fundraising crowd in South Carolina that he thought President Trump would come after him and his family with attacks. And here we are at this moment. It is happening, and it is happening in a very grand scale. Uh, you hear uh, former Vice President Biden there calling for those investigations to look into what President Trump allegedly said. There are investigations ongoing on the Hill right now. As for here at the Iowa Steak Fry, you see former Vice President Biden Biden on the stage right now. Mostly he's stuck to his stump speech. He hasn't addressed this issue from the stage just yet, but Alex will, of course, continue to listen to him today. All right, a big day for the Democratic presidential candidates. Jessica Dean, we know that you'll be there listening yeah. to all of them. Thanks very much. Now, President Trump is again insisting today that reporters should dig into a widely discredited, we need to emphasize that, this is widely discredited, a conspiracy theory involving Joe Biden, Ukraine, and a Ukrainian prosecutor that he helped get fired. Joining me now is CNN reporter and fact checker extraordinary, extraordinary Daniel Dale. Uh, Daniel, Democrats are accusing Trump of wrongdoing, of a flagrant abuse of power, trying to rope a foreign ally into helping his reelection campaign. And Trump then is pointing the finger back at Biden, um, saying that he, in fact, should be investigated. So let's dig into these unproven claims that Trump is making about the former vice president. Sure, Alex. So what happened was Ukraine had a, a top prosecutor, a man named Viktor Shokin, who a lo whole lot of people, including U.S. diplomats, Ukrainian anti-corruption activists, U.S. allies, thought was ineffective in fighting corruption and should be fired. And in 2016, Joe Biden pressured Ukrainian leaders to oust this prosecutor. He said, uh, I will not... Uh, the administration will not give you a billion dollars in loan guarantees you want unless you oust him. And so Ukraine's parliament soon after that did oust him. Now, the basis or alleged basis for the Trump world's complaints is that at the same time as all this was going on, a Biden's son, Hunter, had a lucrative position on the board of directors of a Ukrainian natural gas company that was supposedly being investigated by this prosecutor. Now, as you alluded to, there are a bunch of problems with this theory. One is that we don't even know to what extent extent the company was being investigated. Bloomberg, for example, has reported the investigation was dormant at the time that Biden applied his pressure. Number two is that there's no evidence that Hunter Biden himself was ever under investigation. And the third problem is that it's not at all clear that getting rid of this prosecutor would have helped Biden at all. Uh, this prosecutor, again, was widely thought to be ineffective. So if there theoretically was some wrongdoing, it might have hurt this company that Hunter Biden was affiliated with to have a new prosecutor brought in. Daniel, Biden hasn't exactly shied away from talking about his involvement in Ukraine with this prosecutor. What do we know about his story, what he's saying, and, and, and whether it checks out? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Biden has himself told the story of the pressure he has applied on Ukraine to get rid of this prosecutor. He's held this up as an example of his own work to clean up corruption. Listen to what he said at an event in 2018. I'm desperately concerned about the backsliding on the part of uh, uh, Kiev in terms of corruption. They made, I mean, I'll, I'll give you one concrete example. I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion-dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to press conference. Said, "No, nah. I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars." I said, "You're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here." And I think it was what six hours. I looked. I said, "I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money." Well, son of a bitch, <laughs> got fired, and they put in place someone who was solid at the time.
So it's clear that Trump is right when he says that Biden did apply pressure on Ukraine, did threaten Ukraine to fire a prosecutor. But all the rest of the story about why Biden did this is completely unproven. All right, Daniel Dale, no one better to help break this all down for us. Thanks very much. Thank you.